Hello everybody, Nero X back again for another episode of Digging in the Crates and eat, sorry for about the little, you know, hiatus, unintentional hiatus, I like to call it. Um, a lot's been kind of happening in my life lately, but anyway, enough of that. You know, I'm back. I'm going to start try to start putting out videos a bit more consistently. Um, I'm recording this with a bit of a cold still, but anyway... <laughs> Let's get down to the album review in question, which is none other than Blood Sugar Sex Magic by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, considered to be one of the great landmark albums of the 1990s, and certainly one of the best rock albums of the time. And before we start the review, let's preface all of that with a little bit of background information. Fun now here are some fun facts about the Red Hot Chili Peppers that you may not know. One, they've been around since the mid-1980s. Yeah, believe it or not, the Red Hot Chili Peppers have been in existence as a band since the 1980s. And though they did have a following back then, they didn't start to get mainstream attention until the release of the album Mother's Milk, which was released in 1989. Now, this album marked a few important things for the Red Hot Chili Peppers, the first of them being the changing guitarists. Their, their founding guitarist, Hillel Slovak, tragically passed away in 1987 in 1987 due to a heroin overdose, and his longtime stand-in and friend of the group, John Frusciante, was brought in. Jack Irons, the band's founding drummer, also quit the band at about the same time, in mourning of the loss of one of his best friends. Then, during the, and then Chad Smith would join the group. This would become the, fo this would become the foursome that most people know as the Red Hot Chili Peppers. The second main thing about this album is that it was the first album Rick Rubin produced. Now, Rick Rubin was primarily known for his work with Def Jam Records, primarily with LL Cool J, as well as producing several Beastie Boys albums. He's known for a minimalistic style of production, and it really shows on this album. This album is also the first album where we start hearing the Red Hot Chili Peppers really become more... Uh, what's the word? In not... No, not that. Uh, okay. Where they become more introspective, shall we say. But, moving along... Now that I've given you guys some background information, let's get down to the actual view, shall we? Now, the Red Hot Chili Peppers are well known for Flea's crushing bass lines, intense drums, Anthony's, shall we say, rather suspect singing, but not their guitar playing. This album changes that. In fact, this album, for all intents and purposes, is John Frusciante's coming out party on guitar. Him and Rick Rubin really mesh together, it seemed, and you can definitely tell in the way the guitar, the guitar parts are done and arranged. I mean, listen to the fills he pulls off on Under the Bridge while playing the chords. I can play the song Under the Bridge, and I still can't do 80% of those fills. How did you do that, John Vershanti? Why do you have to make my tiny, mi my tiny meat puppet hands feel so insecure? Give It Away is a great explosion of energy and n nonsensical lyrics, which apparently were just made up on the spot. Breaking the Girl is one of the few Red Hot Chili Peppers acoustic tracks. Yeah, I know, that's a shock. And, wow, what else can you really talk about, say about this album that hasn't already been said? It's the first really introspective album from Anthony Kiedis with the song Under the Bridge, as I mentioned earlier, actually being primarily about his struggle with heroin addiction. Now, Red Hot Chili Peppers' lyrics are rather, shall we say, hmm, what's a good word for this? Interesting, to put it mildly. In fact, a long-running joke is basically every Red Hot Chili Peppers song could be summed up as We're from L.A., We're from L.A., Funky Bass Line, We're from L.A. However, this album changes it up, offering a more mature and almost, in, in some instances, near tear-jerking look at people at his life and his mind as he's gotten, so, as he's gotten sober by this, by this point. Now, Blood Sugar Sex Magic is still considered to this day by both fans and critics to be the Red Hot Chili Peppers' best album. But, honestly, I don't think it is. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a phenomenal album and a great entry point for people who've just discovered the Red Hot Chili Peppers or people just looking for a good album to listen to. But to me, their best album is Californication. It's sort of like this album, only... What's the word I'm looking for to describe it? There we go. More That much more introspective. And introspective Red Hot Chili Peppers is freaking awesome. So with all that being said, should you go check this album out? 
Yes. But don't but don't be one of those people that just assumes that just because this album came out decades ago that they're past their prime. It's still possible for a band to make good music, even if not everyone likes it, or the direction the band goes in in general. But with all that being said, I am Nero X. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe if you want more. Now I must go. My planet needs me. Peace.